Hi, welcome to Saving America's Pets. I'm Holly Sizemore, Chief Mission Officer for Best Friends Animal Society, and this is BG, and if you can understand purring, she's saying, please hit like and subscribe. Today, we are going to talk about something pretty much every US citizen can relate to, us versus them. Yep, it's the biggest roadblock in our country right now, and it's definitely a roadblock in animal welfare. Infighting has always been prevalent in animal welfare, and in some ways, it's always confounded me because our common goal is so straightforward, saving more lives. And yet, as they say, the devil is in the details. And since innocent animals' lives are at risk, it's easy to become divided as we vie for the best way to save the most lives. For instance, during COVID, many government shelters went to emergency-only intake. Some nonprofit grassroots rescue groups were perplexed. A few even lashed out because they felt that the burden of taking non-emergency animals fell on them. And in some cases, that was true. Intake numbers from a subset of shelters and rescue groups found on Shelters Animals Count do show that rescue groups' intake numbers rose by about 7% January through June of this year compared to last year. That's an increase of about 8,000 animals. However, the overall intake across all types of agencies dropped by 24%, or about 400,000 animals total. And the good news is euthanasia is down by 43%. That's over 67,000 more lives saved. And this brings me to my larger point. Yes, we work or volunteer for an individual organization, and it's important to preserve our own organization's well-being and success. However, if we can go beyond ourselves and think more holistically about the animals in our communities and really listen to one another and commit to collaboration and pivoting to help one another, we will save more lives. Today, my guest is Jeanine Fouché, Executive Director of Acadiana Animal Aid, a true collaborator and no-kill light in the state of Louisiana. Louisiana is one of the top five states where the most cats and dogs are still losing their lives. I've known Janine for a number of years before she joined Acadiana Animal Aid, and she's always been a great example of how kindness combined with data-driven decision-making creates the best foundation for collaboration. Welcome, Janine. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much for having me, Holly. Tell us a little about Acadiana Animal Aid, your history and your mission. Acadia Animal Aid is a nonprofit shelter in South Louisiana. Um, every year we handle about 2,700 animals and our primary focus is to pull animals at risk of euthanasia from municipal shelters in our region. And we have been in business for over 40 years. Um, and we're also really well known for our robust transport program, which is how we save a lot of lives here in the South. Acadiana Animal Aid, in the last couple of years, you've, you've pivoted a bit. You've modified what you do. Tell us about why you made the decision to change things up. We're very fortunate to have a 99% uh, save rate at our shelter. And we work very closely with our municipal shelter, pulling animals um, into our location. So we wanted to dig a little deeper and understand what animals were at risk at their shelter and make sure we were focusing on bringing them in. So um, we analyzed their data, we spoke with their team, and we found out that of the 420 dogs that they had euthanized in 2019, 22% of them were for issues such as injuries, you know, skin diseases, things that we knew we could tackle and uh, solve for. So we worked very closely to bring those animals into the shelter. What roadblocks did you experience when implementing these new strategies? I think initially it was resources, both human and financial. Um, you know, we have to really evaluate, do we have the funds to take on more medical cases? Do we have the staff to handle them when they're at the shelter? Do we have foster families who can support us, especially if it might be a behavioral issue? So it's really important for us to look at who's at risk and then determine, do we have the resources so that we can make it a win-win for the shelter, um, our rescue, and the pets we take in. Did you find that this endeavor actually created more resources? 
I would say it created more opportunity for open dialogue and for our staff to truly understand the life-saving role they play. Um, I think initially, you know, when you think, oh, I'm taking in another ringworm, you know, animal and what that means, when we started sharing that these are the animals most at risk of being euthanized in the shelter, everyone immediately wanted to step up and make that difference. So from my perspective, um, it created an opportunity to have a collective life-saving impact rather than just um, management down kind of saying, this is what we're doing. Right. It's that concept of you work together and all boats float higher. Exactly. Yes. Well, it sounds like life-saving has been one of the big rewards. What other rewards have been the side effect of this? I would say our relationship with our municipal shelter has only gotten stronger. And, and one of my, the things I appreciate and um, feel really excited about is the municipal shelter's perception in our community. Um, when I first started here two years ago, I think some people felt a little bit shy or hesitant to adopt. Um, but things have completely changed. Their adoption rates are soaring. Uh, they've started a foster program and they really have become, you know, a destination to go add a pet to your family. And that for me is very, very rewarding because we work as a team. That is terrific. Tell us a little bit about how Acadiana Animal Aid is even helping others outside your area. So we are very fortunate. Um, we are uh, one of the larger organizations in South Louisiana, and we are often partnering with or working with regional and municipal shelters. So um, very often people will reach out to us if they're having issues um, with their local municipality. And we're able to not only talk about what's happening from our perspective, but also bring in our municipal shelter so that we can have a kind of a 360 degree conversation involving the multiple aspects of animal sheltering. I would say, you know, another thing that was really rewarding was in January, I had the opportunity to present at a Best Friends uh, Summit about data and the importance of data. And there were various shelters in the audience. Uh, and afterwards, we were able to communicate with both rescues and municipal shelters and talk about the life-saving work we're doing. Um, and so it's, it was kind of like a benefit by osmosis, which was really rewarding. Speaking of data, we just learned that now Louisiana is sadly in the top five states in the U.S. of most animals killed. How do you intend to help solve for that? You know, Holly, this is definitely a question that really, um, I don't want to say keeps me up at night, but is, is really on my mind. And I think one of the most important things that we can do is really push for accurate data from shelters throughout the state. And that's the piece I think that's missing right now. We have some cities that are leading the way, you know, the New Orleans area, Baton Rouge, you know, uh, Lafayette, but our smaller rural communities are really suffering in that regard. And so I'm hoping that we can continue to act as, um, for lack of a better term, a mentor. So for example, we have a shelter up in Washita Parish, and I was just speaking with um, someone over there, and what's happening is they have so many animals coming in, right? But before they get in, they're reaching out to rescues and they're, they're, they're going out and they're being saved. But those numbers are never making the shelter's intake data. So there is really kind of a gap in terms of the number of animals coming through. So I think one of the most important things we can do is get a handle on how many animals are really coming through so that we can solve for that problem. And then I'm going to make a plug. From my perspective, we need access to low cost spay neuter throughout this state. We have very, very minimal services. And I think that would make a huge difference. Acadia Animal Aid has this reputation, this culture of kindness and helping others. And recently you helped best friends on a transport, I heard. Yeah, we were so fortunate to be in the right place at the right time. Uh, Pond Valley Animal Shelter was transporting animals from Texas to Pennsylvania. And just so happened they broke down 40 minutes outside of our shelter in Crowley, Louisiana. 
and we were able to head on out there with our transport vehicle, load up 50 dogs, bring them to our shelter, um, have them stay overnight, have volunteers come out, walk, feed, and prep them. And then the next day when they were getting ready to leave, they realized that the replacement vehicle was too small. And so we were able to then let them borrow our transport bus so that they can make the transport to Pennsylvania. And for us as a team, it was really so rewarding because this exact situation happened to us once before in Texas and another group stepped up to help us and it meant everything. So we were really happy to pay it forward. True teamwork. Thank you so much for letting me have this opportunity. Um, Best Friends has been such an incredible partner to Acadiana Animal Aid and shelters throughout the nation. And uh, we, we're so grateful that you're leading the way to No Kill 2025. Well, thank you for leading the way with us. When we are able to shift from blame to problem solving, we shift from us versus them to we. We are able to engage our community as a united front and as COVID has shown us, more community engagement is the answer to no kill. Together, we can save them all is not just a tagline. It's the embodiment of our culture here at Best Friends and our hope for the future.